Welcome to Cruising Wheelchair. Hello and welcome to Cruising Wheelchair. So today I wanted to just run through, it's not going to be a, a long vlog, um, it's purely my paperwork side um, of things that we take away with us. Basically everything that we need to go on holiday. Um, as I said in my previous videos, I'm very organised um, and I like to have everything together. Obviously, God forbid anything happened to one of us whilst we were away, at least we know where everything is. So, um, on my Amazon link, I do have a folder um, which is um, basically this, so you, it's linked to it. Um, it's just a A4 plastic folder. Um, so, obviously, I done my own design on there just so I knew what it was um, and it's got individual plastic sheets inside so what I have in this this will go in my hand luggage bag so it will be on me but it won't actually be in my handbag as, as such so I will have I'm not gonna go everything right up front because obviously it's got all of our personal details on here but we've got our parking and um, car parking at Southampton in here. Then um, this is obviously for our MSC cruise. So it's got our itinerary. Um, this is our booking itinerary. So obviously when we booked the holiday, the email that we got through, that goes in here. Um, medical form, they call it the special needs form. Um, obviously, although this is um, scanned in and sent off to um, sorry, I've got a really runny eye. It's allergies is so so bad today. I'm not crying um, So yeah, I do I will keep rubbing my eye unfortunately um, Yes, yeah, so although I've emailed and MSE have acknowledged that they've got my special needs form I just take the original with me just in case um, and then if anyone's traveled with MSE before you get emailed your document through for your tickets and the document itself cool it's it's lots of pages so it will have on here like it will say my cruise ticket and um, with obviously our details on it our loyalty tier the ship we're on our cabin number and um, the port we're disembarking from the date we disembark and our booking number and then the contents of this is basically the embarkation form um, the mandatory health questionnaire now with MSC it needs to be done pen and paper and it has to be done at the moment it's six hours before you um, are due to embark on on your cruise and um, then your cruise the itinerary your booking information what's included um, so when it's meaning what's included there it's for example we've booked for Fantastica cabin so all the extras you've got Bella which is the basic then Fantastica is the next level up so just includes little bits extra bits and pieces and um, anything that you've purchased like um, from the spa for example or any gift packages or anything like that um, and your excursions would be in there too and um, where you're going on cruise destination um, enhance your cruise it's about the MSC for me app now they're only on the newer cruise ships this app and um, we was on MSC Preziosa which is one of their older ships before which didn't have the app so it's completely new for us um, we don't really know what to expect we know how Princess and Medallion um, app works really really well um, this is all new to everybody I suppose with with Covid so we'll, we'll see again it's just a two-nighter for us um, I don't think it's like the medallion app. I don't think you can order drinks or anything from it, but but we'll see. So far, there's not much I can do on it. Um, everything to do, like your passport upload, your picture uploads, like PO want you to do, like Princess want you to do, that was actually all done via um, the cruise personaliser on MSC's website, not on the app. Don't quote me, I don't know if you can do it on the app. Um, but I didn't know that the ship we were going on, the Virtuosa, um, actually had the app until after I'd done all of the information. 
Um, so then it's got get ready for your departure, the COVID information, your main steps for embarkation, safety and code of conduct on board. And basically what that's explaining to you is it's, it is written information of how to do the muster drill. Um, and it also goes into detail about what the, um, as you know, with the muster drill, um, you get the, I believe it's seven, seven beeps and one long or six beeps and one long six short beeps and one long beep i think um or six we know it's so many short beeps and then one long <laughs> beep which means that we want to get our life jacket and um or get to our area um our, our muster station but it also goes into detail about what man overboard um um signal is um if there's an emer medical emergency um, which I've briefly read through, um, but I've got it all in here um, to take on, and read whilst we're um, waiting or once we're in the cabin, basically. Um, normally I do it at the hotel the night before, so I'll probably do that as we've not done a new MSE ship before, so this is all new for us. And obviously it comes with your ticket. Um, now the rest of this um, I would put anything like excursions, we've not booked any excursions, we're going to Guernsey as I said before, um, I would put um, if we booked spas, um, this probably wasn't the best cruise to do this video or this vlog on because there is limited information that I've got in here. Um, our Canary Cruise, for example, we've got speciality dining, which would go in here. We've got, and um, that's um, t times two. We've got um, a, a couple's massage, which would go in, in here as well. Um, I think we've got an excursion or two on, on that one as well, which would be in here. Um, <clears throat> anyway, towards the back um, of the folder. So this folder sounds really sad. I've got two folders. This one is for all cruise lines except for Princess. And then I have another one, um, exactly the same. The only difference is it's got metal rings here and that's purely for Princess. So all the information that we need for Princess Cruises remains in that folder, um, as well as what I'm about to show you. Um, and then I have this folder for any other cruise lines that we go on. So obviously once the cruise finished, everything at the front here that I just showed you will be shredded and removed. But this at the back will remain. So this is our travel insurance. We were stay sure um, and um, we get a yearly policy. It covers all my medical conditions. Um, we do cruise cover um, and obviously the current um, rules of um, the COVID cover, um, medical expenses and, and, and all of that. Um, so that will be in there. I've got um, my wheelchair insurance in here. Um, I've got a copy of my passport and then hubby's passport and um, a copy of my care plan which is basically all my doctors how to contact them and um, my next of kin which is my husband who'll be with me anyway all of my medication I'm on all of my allergies how to care for me if I end up going into hospital and um, because I am co quite complex with my conditions and um, which is all being done by my medical team so it's kind of like my medical notes all condensed down um, in case of an emergency. Um, and, uh, and basically that, that's it for the folder. So this folder is actually complete, ready to go into the hand luggage because as I said, it's only a two night cruise. We haven't got a lot of um, paperwork to print out for it. Um, and I have been told by the um, reservations team um, of MSC that they don't actually require now to see proof of your travel insurance in the terminal. So where I would have a, basically just a photocopy of the travel insurance certificate that states about the COVID and repatriation, um, medical expenses, etc. I haven't bothered this time because if they do require it, I can just grab this out of my hand luggage and obviously go straight to the back and show them. So that's not a biggie. Um, now, as, as I, I said, said, I have a handbag, which I have on me, which had the lanyards in it, um, uh, my wallet, um, our masks, <coughs> and I then carry this. 
which is obviously filled up with stuff, it's empty at the moment, I'll show you what I put in there. Um, again, these um, are on the Amazon list. You, you can't just buy that one or two, I think it's end up like a pack of like 10 or 15. Um, but I use them for other things, obviously I've got two house cats, so like their medical um, records go in here for when we go to the vets, one each. Um, for other bits and pieces like electricity, gas, water, just so it's all organised in my filing cabinet. So yeah, I'm a little bit OCD that way. So in here I'll have a couple of pens, got one, so keep a couple of pens in here. Um, pens a pen if we need it always end up probably needing it um we have to do for one with msc the um medical declaration form six hours before we embark um one of the things um that we did have a little bit of an issue with um for this cruise so far it's been sorted was when my tickets came through our embarkation time was for four o'clock now um, as I said previously in my very first vlog, um, I have medication at set times and that was going to clash with the time that I need to have my set medication which needs to be in the cabin. Um, I need clean area, I need privacy, I can't do it in the terminal or on the, the ship's like um, public area toilets for example. So I called up MSC and I explained, um, obviously not in detail, but I explained, you know, what our situation was and what could we do about it because it, it's relatively important for me. Um, I can push it maybe five, ten minutes, but however long it's going to take us to get on, we don't know, obviously. We could have a really smooth check-in and we could be in our cabin by half past four or we could be queuing and still be, you know, in the terminal at half past five. We, we don't know. And I can't chance that um, because I could then become quite poorly quite quickly. Um, the lady I spoke to, her name was Jackie. So Jackie, if you're watching this, thank you. You were a star. She contacted MSC um, head office straight away. Um, a lot of them are still working from home. Uh, and it's been sorted that our check-in time is now one o'clock um, and which suits us perfectly we could have done it as early as 10 o'clock but um, I've got medication in the morning and in the afternoon and then around the four o'clock time so for me one o'clock generally when we go on any cruises we're generally on the ship between 12 and 1 I think I think the latest we've ever been on is about half past one. So that suits us perfectly fine. Um, the only issue that I had was when they reset the tickets to me, it still said four o'clock. The app still says four o'clock. So after a few phone calls and an email, um, it's been found out that because the tickets have actually been produced, they can't physically change the time on the tickets. So I've got an email from MSE stating that the time their end on their computers, it's all showing one o'clock. So in theory, it should show that in the terminal. But if not, I have an email from them stating that our checking time is actually one o'clock. It's been authorised from head office um, and there should be no problems. So fingers crossed on that because the last thing we want is any hold up. Um, it does actually state on the ticket that they are um, strict with their timing, which is why I made the phone call. So if your checking time is four o'clock and you turn up at one o'clock, they, from what the ticket's saying, and I don't know how strict it is because we haven't cruised with them yet, but the ticket does say that if you turn up earlier than your time, you will be turned away from the terminal. So they're not even letting you go into the terminal and wait. So for us, well, for me, I, that was a bit of a panic because it was like, well, what am I going to do? I, where, where am I going to go with not only our luggage, but all of my medical equipment too, um, especially if we've parked our car up. So that's all sorted. So this little folder, I keep this in my handbag and literally what stays in here is everything that they will ask for us at check-in. So, first of all, as I said my last vlog, we stay in um, our hotel overnight. 
um, rebooked this last minute because of the P&O Aurora being cancelled due to um, her being delayed in dry dock. So we weren't planning to go on, on, on this cruise. So the hotel prices were really, really expensive. Um, as I said, as soon as they're released, I book the hotel room and usually I can get them, but the average is around 40 to 50 pound a night. And that's either at the um, Hilton um, Aegeus Bowl, Aegeus Bowl um, in Southampton. Um, opposite that is a Holiday Inn Express um, M27, is it? Yeah. Junction. Aegeus Bowl. Yeah, opposite the Aegeus Bowl. Um, and then the third hotel that we usually stay at is another Holiday Inn Express, which is... Um, that's the M27. No, the, the West, okay. um, which is nearer the terminal. So it's a lot closer. Um, we like that one because checkout time used to be 12 o'clock. Um, since COVID, check-in time is four o'clock, which doesn't bother us because we check in later. We check between six and eight in the evening. Um, but if your embarkation time is like one, two, three, four o'clock, for example, there's probably many which are four o'clock on MSE. They're staying in a hotel overnight in Southampton checkout time is generally 11 o'clock for hotels so unless you book obviously an extended stay um, um, or a late checkout um, but since Covid they have reduced it now to 11 o'clock so um, but yeah normally around 40 to 50 pounds the maximum we would pay would be around 90 pounds now we are booked up as I said until October of 2024 um, the hotels come out a year before so I'm hotel wise and booked up for our October our on the sky um, the November on Cunard Queen Victoria um, February on P&O Ventura and then April P&O Ventura again um, different itinerary um, and then our next cruise would be October um, 23 princess search of the northern lights now that one then 2024 in april on iona and 2024 october on ventura those are not booked the hotels because they're simply not out yet um but it's in my diary so it will pop up the day that they will be released and i'll go straight on there that's one of my tips you know if you do want to or you're a minarium if you do that on the day they come out choose it's a little bit more expensive because you can choose the one where it's free cancellation and you don't pay until you arrive. Sometimes it's, it's probably about £10 difference um, in price. If you pay up front, um, then you can't cancel um, without losing your money or change the date or anything without, you know, there being a penalty. So we, since COVID, we always now book, it's slightly more expensive to do the changes because obviously we don't know what's happening you know cruises can get cancelled or you know we might be sick and we have to move a cruise so we do that um, and then the other good thing about it is if you keep checking it throughout the year sometimes they do offers if you have a blue light card um, for example with the holiday in express and the holiday inns they're offering I think it's 10 or 20 percent off at the moment um, to for the stays I think to the end if you book that is um till the end of august i think july or august it is um which helps because obviously it, it all adds up um and then obviously if it's cheaper you can cancel your original booking and then rebook the cheaper price which is something that obviously i will do as well um so this time round although we are staying in um, a hotel overnight we're staying in um days in sutton is it Scotney North, which, how far away is it? About uh, half an hour. So it's about... Half hour, 40 minutes. About, about half hour, 40 minute drive. Now, when we stay at the Hilton, um, Aegeus Bowls, that's probably around about 20 to 25, minutes. 25 minute drive. So, but this was the cheapest hotel I could find and it was £85. Um, and it's just a day's in at... I believe it's, I think it's one of those hotels at the service stations. Um, the A34 bypass. So, you know, it's an adapted room, luckily. Um, I think they're only about three star basic, but 
you know, yes, we like luxury, but for one night, you know, as long as the bed's comfortable enough, we're not bothered. So I'll have this um, in, not, I have it in the folder, but in the car, I'll keep it, my, I'll take it out and put it in my pocket because it's the only thing I'm going to need for when we go into the hotel. So I have that in, in there. Now, we have the parking um, to go up on the dashboard. That will go in the blue folder as well. And then, so this is Hubby's. So Hubby's passport. Um, we have got his, um, the NHS proof of vaccines. We have his ticket for, so proof of vaccines, his um, ticket for MSC, and then the medical form that we need to fill out, um, that the health declaration form that we need to fill out six hours before. As it stands at the moment, um, we have our Randox um, LFT tests, which we'll upload and then get a certificate for, um, which obviously we can only plan for what it is at the moment. There's lots of changes going around at the moment. The CDC have just um, announced that they've dropped like, their protocols for COVID on the ships. In other words, leaving the ships to decide for their own what they want to do and how they want to do things so we go 25th of august we are coming to the end of july now we've not had any word as of yet but it could be the day before that we find out actually p and o got announced yesterday from i think it's the 24th, 24th or the 28th of july that you don't need to buy like a randox test anymore you can physically go to Boots or Superdrug, get the one ninety nine two pound, however much they are individually, um, take that test still two days before, um, and that's all you have to do. So they're doing it now based on trust. Um, MSC might go down that route. NCL have stopped COVID testing. Azamara have stopped it, um, I found out today. So we've got it. We got it because of p and Aurora. So not that we buy, that's one thing we wouldn't buy early is the tests because obviously rules are changing just, they're so fluid at the moment. Um, but obviously we had them ready for p and Aurora. So even if they do change, we will still use those tests because we've paid for them now. So um, that's the only added paperwork that will go in, in here um, for my husband. Um, so when we get to the terminal, I literally put it out like this and be like, that's all of my husband's information. And obviously, as you can imagine, this is my passport. My I've got exactly the same in here and the handover. This is all my information. And then the checkout, um, the check in um, staff look through what they need to look through um, and hand it all back to me. So, and sorry, I've got, that's the email basically stating that our check-in time um, is not four o'clock, it's now one o'clock. We did actually cross it out on the ticket and, and write one o'clock, but obviously you, you never know. Um, the other thing that we do keep spares in here um, is luggage tags. We have plastic ones um, that we'll basically fold over and they'll slot into so they don't get damaged. We've printed one off for the MSC cruise, but we're just going to keep hold of it in, in my folder because we're not taking a lot, as you saw from the packing video. We've just got the black rolly holder. Um, the hand luggage bag will be on my lap. Um, medical bags will be on the back of the wheelchair. And, that, and that's all we've got. So I don't think that we're going to check in our, uh, our hold all but we're going to take it just in case we change our mind at the last minute. And then the only um, last thing which goes into this folder, my eye, it's terrible. I look like I've been punched, is this little pouch. <clears throat> and tips. Tips is a very controversial conversation, should we say. Um, I'm British, 
not used to tipping you know we'll go to a restaurant um and on a rare occasion in the past i might have left a tip growing up with my parents going out for meals i remember my parents sometimes living it leaving a tip and other times not um but when we go to other countries which do tip for example like america that's their culture so we like to respect their culture and respect um the way that they live basically um we went to new york i i, I surprised my husband um this is just before I, I got put into a wheelchair um in february of 2015 to new york he'd always wanted to go and being in the fire service for 24 25 years um ground zero 9 11 was a big place obviously they're all brothers at the end of the day and you know he wanted to to see and and pay his wishes and respect and actually go and talk to some of the fire fighters in new york um and we went to planet i think it was planet hollywood or it was it was a restaurant there anyway no a hard rock cafe it was um and we had a lovely waitress she was really really nice and it came to we got given the bill and then at the bottom of the bill it's got like percentages of how much you can tip or what you should tip and it was really confusing and obviously from a culture of the british culture that don't tip and we don't have that on our receipts we were like well we know we need to tip but what we don't know is how much we should tip um and what we didn't want to do was be offensive or rude just because we didn't understand and she could see that we were i'm in an hour like, i'm in an hour and over this receipt so she wanted to check we were okay and we were honest and we said look we we want to tip and she was very much like you know no you don't have to you don't have to and we we're like well we know we don't have to but we want to but the problem we have is we don't understand how it works and we're not understanding on the receipt here and we don't want to leave a tip that is too low than the basic minimum that you would expect from the meal that we've eaten so she kindly explained it to us basically um i don't remember if i'm honest um do you remember no it's just that there's an expected minimum and uh, um, so there's a bare minimum and then there's an, an, an excellent service uh, yeah. recommendation and so, it's in percentages that's what's confusing yeah so like my husband just said that you've got the bare minimum and then you it goes up in percentages and it's like you know bare minimum which everybody would pay um, in America, for example, and then it would go up if you had a, really if good, you had service. a good service or great service or fantastic. Expressed in percentages, which is confusing. Yeah, but it's expressed in, in percentages, which that's what was confusing us. <clears throat> so when we cruise, we when we done Princess Cruises predominantly is our main cruise line, which is an American cruise line. Um, I've done a lot of Royal Caribbean cruises in the past and we've done celebrity cruises, all American lines. So for me, in my frame of mind, any American ship that I go on, I am going to have um, dollars with me um, for tipping if I get good service. Um, obviously, we have our gratuities, um, which we pay. We always do pay. There is a lot of people which choose to take gratuities off and then pay as they go along um everybody has their opinion on those people to me it's your cruise it's your money you do what you want with it um but what we do is um to be fair princess their new package um includes gratuities anyway p and o have included their gratuities now anyway um our last cruise of celebrity it was concierge um the package we had includes gratuity so i can't actually remember the last time we physically had to add on our gratuities to our cruise <clears throat> so um we don't eat a lot in the main dining room so we don't tip in the main dining room because on a two-week cruise we may eat once or twice um as i said we spend a lot more time in our cabin so room service is a big thing for us um and our steward for the cabin because he he or she will have their routine 
and then when I come on ship I mess their routine up because of my hours that I will need to be in the cabin um, and then obviously they clock on and clock off at certain times so on the day that we get on the ship we always introduce ourselves and we explain that we're early people um, and we we don't really need a lot we just want fresh towels each day basically um, and then in the evenings when we do go out to get something to eat um, they're really really good the, the, the stewards because if let's say our cabin would be last on the list because they know that we would be back early they would change it around and do our cabin first on, on their list that night not all of them do that but there is like everywhere you go you have some which will go above and beyond and then you've got others that seem to not care at all so in this little pouch um i actually made them myself they are um lit we, when we obviously at the end of our cruise and we want to tip um they are basically little cards so there's a little pouch here where you can slot some some money in which just says thanks and then on the back um we can write obviously something that we want to write to them and obviously sign it from ourselves um and i've got them in yellow red white um green and blue and orange um and yeah i just print two off at a time um hubby cuts them out i glue them together and keep them in here and then um yeah basically at the end of the cruise anyone that we feel went above and beyond um on an american cruise line we would always tip if we're doing a P&O cruise for example where it's predominantly they understand that it's predominantly british it's not really our way to tip if we have had really good service we will tip um but because obviously everything is included with P&O if we don't think the service has been you know great or they've been a little bit snarky or a little bit rude then we won't tip being the typical british attitude i suppose so but i do keep these on me all, all the time obviously they're empty um and um then what we will do um on especially an american cruise line um comes down to how much is enough to be you know polite so they knew that they did a good job um but not too low for them to think oh well that, what did i do wrong or you know what could i improve on that's why i leave that bit at the back so we can write and thank them for what they did um just so they know you know that we were happy instead of just handing them a bit of cash and just saying oh you know you've done a good job thanks that's it just makes it a little bit more personal for them but if it's like a five night cruise for example we're not going to be given a hundred dollars because we haven't got that type of money spare for starters there's many people i know that cruise that do have that money great you know if we had the money of course we would do it because they work bloody hard but we don't have that money so we would work out that maybe on a five night cruise we would give them mm, anything depending again how good they were minimum of maybe $15, maximum of maybe $30. Um, and then on a longer cruise, a 10 night or a 14 night cruise, again, depending on how they are, the maximum we've ever um, tipped is, is, was it not 100 for the 15 night cruise? For, no, again, $50. I thought it was two fifties. Okay. I think that when we did the 15 night Hawaiian cruise that we gave a hundred dollars as in two fifty notes to our steward hubby thinks it was only 50. So the fact that I, my memory is not overly great. We are the maximum we've tipped, um, for a two week cruise is either being $50 or a hundred dollars. Let's say somewhere in between to save any arguments. Um, and, and that's it. So basically with that folder, I pop everything inside it. It fits really nice and easy. It's no doesn't doesn't 
um, crinkle anything up or um, bend it, just A4 pieces of paper basically bent, um, bent folded in half. Um, yeah, it's A5 and um, the folder. Um, you want me to put this in there, do you? Yeah, put it in there for now just in case. I need it. So I've just been putting everything inside. So, and um, that's it. So that's the folder and it goes into, I can reach it. So as I said, this is my handbag. So it fits inside my handbag there, which is on me on the wheelchair. Um, so it's really easy. I obviously just whip it out when we need it. Um, for checking the folder with all, this, all the information that we need is in the hand luggage bag. So again, if I want proof of our insurance, um, it's there. If we've got any problems with our car parking, um, obviously we've got the invoice. Um, if there's any problems on the cruise ship, for example, that the, IT, um, the um, invoice says that, you know, we were to have something in the cabin or whatever it will be, um, we've got the proof for it. Um, the special needs form I've got the proof of and then the itinerary just to know where we're going each day because although we book a cruise obviously the two night one like I said probably wasn't the best one to, to do an, an example of but when we do the Canaries for 10 nights um, I know that we're going to the Canary Islands we're going to Madeira we're going to Lisbon um, Sorry. yeah it's Canary Islands I think we're doing maybe Vigo on the way back I can't that's that thing I can't remember and I don't know what order it's in so the only thing I do know is I found it odd is generally when you do a Canary cruise from Southampton you go to Madeira first we're actually doing Gran Canaria as our first stop and Madeira is actually on the way back up and then they jump over to mainland Spain it might be your Porto actually we're going to I I generally can't remember but yeah so that will be on there so when I did the electrical pack um, video, you saw the magnetic um, clips. Um, they're linked um, in the Amazon um, shop. Um, as I said, these are as is folders. Um, and especially, for example, on the Sky Princess um, cruise in October, where we've got the speciality restaurants. Um, obviously on certain evenings we've got spa a couple's um, massage on a certain day excursions on certain days the clips um, will be literally on the wall here um, with the details on so we know when it is and when it's for and then when it's finished we literally will just get rid of it chuck it in the bin we're not ones to keep for the whole cruise everything that we've done um, or we do if, if we get like the princess patter we will keep hold of that one thing I do miss since the pandemic is we never used to keep the patters but at the very end of your cruise you used to have like um it was like a an overall summary. um summary um so it'd be a map of where you've sailed how many nautical miles you've done and just had all like like more technical information on it which I found interesting and we've kept all of them from our cruises but they've stopped doing them now as far as I'm aware they've stopped doing them obviously October will be our first should we say real cruise since the pandemic's happened and um, the staycation last year was four nights we didn't go anywhere um, the Enchanted five nights in May this year and um, we did Northern Europe but we didn't get it on on her but then was that because she was a last minute idea that came over um msc um they don't generally do it anyway and it's only a two-nighter to guernsey and back so we'll see so yeah if, if they've got it great if not we'll keep hold of the patterns and um i just chuck them in a drawer and then generally it's beginning of the cruise it's like no no we'll keep them we'll keep them like for memory and then when we come to packing at the end of the cruise, I get them out the drawer and it's like, shall we keep them? It's like, oh no, we won't bother anymore. And then they just end up in the bin. But we don't have everything hanging up on our walls or everything. Once it's done, day's done, the um, activity or whatever it is, is done in the bin, nice and neat and nice and simple. Um, this will be my last vlog now until we do 
the MSC Virtuosa cruise. I think it's 32 days um, until we cruise. Um, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, um, the countdown started. I popped up there this morning. Um, and tomorrow I will be releasing um, an accessible, a new accessible port guide for another cruise. Um, it is, I won't say what it is, um, I will leave it as a surprise, but it is a very popular cruise um, which people are taking, especially with it now coming into the school holidays. Um, and then after that one, I've got another three, which I've already done, um, which I will release um, probably up until we go away on our MSC cruise. Um, and then that will be it for now for the accessibility, um, the, port, uh, the accessible port guides. Um, what I will do is obviously when I go on um, cruises and find out more information or updated information, then I shall update them and then I will re-blog it as a new update just so that you're not missing out on anything. Um, so that's it for now. Um, thank you very much for listening. I hope it was helpful and, and a little bit interesting. Um, I'm nosy. I love to know what other people do and how they pack. Um, this is how we do it. Um, it works really well for us, especially being in the wheelchair. Um, you can't hold loads of things. You know, you've got one hand which is driving um, and then that's it. You've just got the other hand and generally you've got bags on you and everything else. If you haven't subscribed um, on my website, please do. It doesn't cost anything. Um, it's just purely for my blog side of things. Um, if you subscribe, um, when I release a new blog, automatically to your email it will be sent. So you don't have to hunt on social media or, you know, wait on social media. If I announce it, um, you'll automatically get it. So you'll never miss it. And on YouTube, um, if you could subscribe, that would be great. Again, it doesn't cost you anything. It's just that you'll be notified um, when I do new blogs, obviously. At the moment, this is all new. As I said, I'm starting out. I'm showing you a bit of, of who I am and how I travel and what I use in traveling. Um, so from now on, um, I was on an hour in rather to do a vlog on our wash bag. I don't see the point of it. A wash bag's a wash bag. You know, we all wash with, you know, the same types of, of 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 things so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna waste your time on on what we have in our wash bag um so from now on our my vlogs will purely be um on our cruises um uh, of the cruise ship of the adapted cabin how accessible it is um and also if we're not getting off in guernsey but on our other cruises where we get off how accessible it is obviously the accessible port guides i've done that already um so you have that in paper form purely to help you plan um your cruises um and give you ideas you know if there's anything in town nearby the port as opposed to spending um a lot of money on an adapted excursion which if we're completely honest not a lot of cruise lines offer. So um, yeah, with that, thank you very much. Um, no pressure to subscribe, but if you don't, then you'll miss out. Um, and I think that the information that I give as is pretty much something that I would want to know as a newbie. Um, even if I've cruised for years, there's some vloggers who I watch now and I think, oh, you know, I didn't think of something like that. It doesn't work for me because I'm not able-bodied, but that's really good for an able-bodied person. So my aim is to try to make it as much fun, less stressful and easy to book and to pack to get ready having a disability because we all know that it's just tough, full stop. 
Um, so yeah, next time you'll see us will be on the MSC Virtuosa, 25th of um, August. I will do a, um, I will make up a small vlog of the days in um, hotel um, that we're staying in um, the night before. Um, but yeah, um, that will be, so they'll be released at the end of August, beginning of September. Um, and I hope you enjoy them too. So take care, keep safe everybody, and thanks for watching. Bye.